Hi everyone, this is Mr. Abramovich. Uh, this is going to be your AP Physics 1 video on linearizing equations and graphs. Uh, before you watch any more of this, I want you to stop. I want you to go into your quarter one lab packet. And I want you to turn to page 39. Looks like this. And I want you to do 39 and 40. At least give it a shot. Spend 15 minutes, no more than that, trying it and then come back and we'll talk about it. Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, so the point of the exercise you just did in your quarter one lab packet is to kind of see what the point of linearizing an equation is, what it accomplishes for you. So um, in the very first part, it gave you some data on a falling object, basically it's vertical position after a certain amount of time of falling. And I had you graph that and you come up with this relationship, which shows that the position is proportional to the square of time. So we've, we've seen graphs like this before, position time graphs. And a question that we've heard in class, students ask, okay, like fine, we, we know that the velocity is increasing, but there's no way to find the acceleration off of a graph like this because you'd have to check out instantaneous velocities and try to estimate how the rate at which they're they're getting bigger and bigger so can you even get an acceleration off of a graph like this and the answer is it's really hard to do that directly unless you have um, a, a model that fits this so we have another way of doing this what we can do is since we know that position is directly proportional to the square of time what if we plot the square of time on the horizontal axis instead of just time. And then what you get is something like this, where t squared is plotted on the horizontal axis, position is plotted on the vertical axis. And if we try to fit those data points, I bet we'll see a little something more like what we're looking for. looks like they are linearly related. So now, now we're in business. If we think about the equation that relates position and time squared, there's an acceleration term in that equation. And it happens to be a multiplier for the time squared term, which means you're gonna be able to get the slope of this line and get the acceleration out of there. So that's, that's what we're trying to accomplish today. We're trying to take variables that are not linearly related and put them into an equation that we can rearrange in order to get some kind of linear relationship so we're able to extract information out of a line graph. All right, everyone. Uh, we are now on page 24 of your quarter one lab packet. And we're going to look a little more at how uh, the technique of linearizing equations could be helpful to us, where it's really going to come in handy this year is when we're designing experiments and trying to figure out ways on how to analyze our data and, and test the theory. So say for instance, you have a model that you want to test. Your experiment, you want to see if a kinematic equation is good to model a certain falling object. Uh, one test you might propose is you want to change one variable and measure the effect on another variable and then see if there's a pattern with those variables that matches up with this model. So if you were to say collect data on velocity versus time and plot it so that time is on the horizontal axis and velocity is on the vertical axis, something like this. And I should put a title on my graph, but I don't have a lot of space, so I'm gonna skip it this time. Maybe you would see your data show up something like this. So a line with a positive slope and some kind of intercept. What you could do is then see what kind of way you could alter this equation so that um, it matches up with the standard equation of a line. In that way, the slope of the intercept of your line will actually have a certain meaning. So what would be the meaning of the slope of that line? Well, the M term is your slope, and since you plotted your independent variable on the horizontal axis, T, the multiplier of T in the equation, the multiplier of your independent variable, that's gonna be your slope. So in this case, your slope actually is going to be 
acceleration. Your intercept, the thing that gets added to the independent variable term, the B term, in this case, it would actually represent your initial velocity, the, the speed that it was started at. So in this case, our intercept has a meaning as well. So if you wanted to then analyze this further, you could ask, well, is this equation good for measuring the motion of a falling object? If it was good, you would expect the slope to have a certain value. For a falling object, you'd expect the acceleration to be, to have a magnitude of 9.8 meters a second squared. So if your line had a slope of 9.8 meters a second squared, you would know that this model works. So that's how we're going to be using this technique this year is we're going to try to fit variables into a line equation and match them up with a theoretical model and see if the values are consistent or the ranges are consistent. So let's try another experiment. This time we're going to vary acceleration and measure the time it takes for a cart to go from rest to some specific final velocity. All right. So in this case, our independent variable, the thing we're varying is acceleration. Our dependent variable, the thing we're measuring the effect on is the time it takes to go from rest to a specific final velocity. So if we have a specific final velocity we're going to keep consistent for all the different values of the independent variable we're going to use, it's always going from rest. Our controls are going to be initial velocity and final velocity. So this is where the linearizing algebra comes in. We're going to have to take that equation we were working with and rearrange it in a way so that we have the dependent variable isolated on the left side, some constant, so we don't want a thing that's changing, multiplying our independent variable. So if we need to have um, our dependent variable on the left side, we can change the equation around so it looks like this. So subtract the AT over to one side, subtract the VF over to the right side, and now what we can do is we want to get the independent variable and the dependent variable away from each other. So let's get the independent variable back on the right side of the equation. If we divide both sides by minus A, we could have time by itself, and we could have put a minus on this side and then one over a. So now we just have to distribute that minus sign through and we could have vf minus vi times one over a. So in this case we have an equation where if we plot one over acceleration on the horizontal axis and time on the vertical axis, our slope should be delta V. So we're going to plot some version of our independent variable on the horizontal axis. It doesn't have to be exactly acceleration. It could be some manipulated version of acceleration that is factored out from all the constant multipliers. Now on the vertical axis, we could just plot time because that's already by itself. Our slope should be this multiplier term. So it could be VF minus VI, or you could call it Delta V. And then the intercept, I don't think there is any intercept there because there's no added term. So you should expect a zero intercept. And this is a good way to do some error analysis. If you expect a zero intercept, but you see a non-zero intercept, that's always a hint that there could be something else going on that you didn't expect, either a flaw in your model, some kind of systematic error. It's a good thing to look out for. All right, we just flipped it over. We're on page 25 of your quarter one lab packet. I want to try a couple more examples of linearizing equations just to show you a couple ways you can do it. For instance, if you look at number two, there are actually at least two ways I can think of that would be acceptable for linearizing this. 
if your independent variable is m and your dependent variable is v. So that means in an experiment you would change the mass and look for an effect on what would in this case be your speed. Obviously we haven't used this equation yet, but it's one we'll use later this year. We can still make a good example out of it. So what we want to do is we want to make sure our independent variable is on the right side multiplied by a constant. Our dependent variable is isolated on the left side with no multiplier. But after that, it's kind of up to you how you want to arrange it. So um, the variables can be inversed or squared or something like that. They just can't um, be together on the same side of the equation and the dependent variable can't have any constant multipliers. So one way we could rearrange this is you could divide out v squared to the other side and then bring the k back to the right side and have something like this. 1 over v squared is equal to 1 over 2k times m. So then your dependent variable would be 1 over v squared and your independent variable would be m. So that's what you would plot. The other way you could do it, you could easily keep your v squared in the numerator, divide out your m to the other side. So an alternative would look like this, v squared equals 2k times 1 over m as your independent variable. So no matter which way you arrange it, they would both work. It just means that your slope would mean different things. So we can stick with this one. On our y-axis, we would plot v squared. On our x-axis, we would plot 1 over m. And if you make your graph that way, those two versions of the variables should be linearly related. So your slope would be the constant multiplier of the independent variable, you would expect 2 times k to be your slope, and then there's no intercept there. One other example we could do in number 4. This equation is actually almost there. They want our independent variable to be vf and our dependent variable to be vi. Since those don't have any coefficients and they're on opposite sides of the equation, we could actually kind of leave those alone. The only thing we'll change is we'll move this added term to the side with the independent variable. So we'll rewrite it like this. VI squared equals VF squared minus 2 times A times delta X. So then what we have is our independent variable upon the X axis, VF squared. Our dependent variable, which we'll plot on the y-axis, vi squared. And notice there's no constant multiplying the independent variable. So we should see a slope of 1 if this model works. And then interestingly enough, we have this negative intercept, negative 2a times delta x. So sometimes the information you really want to get out of your graph, it might not be in your slope. It might actually be in your intercept. All right, keep practicing. Let us know if you have questions.